everyone, thank you for watching my video. Um, go ahead and like and subscribe. Um, hit the notification bell to see all of my new videos as they're coming out. Um, I'll tell you at the end exactly why you want to do that. Uh, but building a boat was one of the most satisfying experiences I've ever had. Um, there's a lot of things you have to watch out for and I did a lot of learning along the way. Um, the first thing that you're going to want to do is make sure that your um, f your form for the frames is completely level. Um, unfortunately, I didn't do that um, until afterwards, um, and it kind of uh, t uh, it kind of tweaked the hull in one particular direction, which um, it was only off by about a quarter inch, which I wasn't entirely worried about, but um, to keep the overall look of any boat that you're building, I would recommend um, going ahead and getting um, yourself a good set of levels. Um, the second thing um, is obviously the frames. Uh, once you start building them, you need to make sure that they are um, the right size, they're cut properly, um, and that they have the right um, bevels on them. Um, I cut mine a little bit bigger than what the plan said to do and the reason I did that is I knew that once I started fairing I was going to have a lot of um, wood coming off of it and I didn't want them to shrink too much and then end up being too small or not working for what I was doing so I went ahead and made them a little bit larger um, once you start putting um, the uh, transom and the frames and mounting it to it. Um, there's a lot of different ways that people have done it that I've seen. One thing that I do recommend and the way that I did it is I just took two by four blocks and screwed my frames to it. Again, there's a lot of ways that you can do it, but you need to make sure that when they're on the form that they are, that they're level to the ground. Otherwise, again, they're going to be off um, your measurements aren't going to be the same and uh, the overall look of the boat is just not going to be what you want it to be at the end. When you're bending the wood around your frames to get it uh, to bend to the lines um, on the boat, it's easiest to start at the front. I've done it both ways. I've started at the back and bent it towards the front. Um, but I find that it is a lot easier to get the angle on the front right first so that the front will line up and then bend it as you come to the back and cut it off and slip it into the groove on the transom uh, where it goes in. I'm sure it holds for any boat that you build, but it did for uh, the Glen L Squirt that I built. Um, the hardest part of all of it was probably the fairing. You really want to take your time when you're sanding and fairing down your frames because that is where your hull is going to attach. And if it's not right or it's not quite there but you decide to put it on anyway, that later down the line can cause uh, your hull to crack or your fiberglass to become delaminated. All sorts of other problems can occur because uh, you took a shortcut when you were building the frames. Fiberglassing was what I thought was going to be the most difficult, but it wasn't. Uh, the It's easy as long as you keep moving. Um, you don't really want to do some of it and then stop because then there's extra steps sanding to keep going. Uh, the big thing that I did not do was sand it before I painted it. Um, that causes a lot of problems. It can put ripples in the paint um, and you're not going to get that glassy look that you're wanting. Once it's painted, um, it's very easy to flip. At least this boat was because of how small it was. I decided to build mine at 10 foot. Um, it just seemed like that was what fit my space the best um, and I decided also I wanted to do a smaller boat at first to learn uh, what I was doing so that once I did decide to build a larger one um, I had an idea of what to do um, and how I was supposed to do it. Um, 
flipping the boat was very easy. Uh, me and one other person, my older brother, came over. We flipped it um, and set it down on a homemade uh, form that I had sitting there um, that was wrapped in carpet that made it very easy to just set down um, in, on a level floor. Um, I cut away all of the extra hull and fiberglass that was hanging off the top of it. Some people I have seen cut the hull to match the top of the boat. I didn't personally do that because I knew I could cut it off later, but because of the curve on the top of the boat, I knew that if there wasn't enough of the hull left for me to fasten the decking to, that it would cause problems and there'd be gaps and then I'd have to fill it and paint it and I didn't want to have to deal with that. So I figured it would be easier to, I thought it would be easier to come back and just cut it off when I was done. The, the seats and the floorboards and the decking all was extremely easy. Um, Glenelg really did an amazing job putting all of the details into the plans that I got. Um, the decking went on with a brad nailer. Um, I used inch and a half nails into quarter inch plywood to uh, fasten it down. Then I went back over it with a stain and a sealer and then um, I painted the design that I wanted on it. Um, originally I was going to go with a solid oak top but thought that it would be too heavy for that particular boat um, but I may do that in a boat that I make um, at a later date. Um, overall I really enjoyed the experience of the building it. I ended up putting a five horsepower Evinrude on my boat. Um, unfortunately it is a little underpowered. It does not get onto a plane. Um, I probably stuck between uh, five and seven uh, miles per hour uh, which just does not get me on a plane. I am planning to upgrade to either a 10 or a 15 horse uh, at a later date. I'm just waiting to find one in my area. Um, and then I have it on a utility trailer that I screwed two pieces of uh, 2x4 with um, as my bunks that I took and wrapped in carpet and it slides on that that works perfectly for my needs for this particular boat um, but Glenel also does sell the plans for the trailer that goes with it I'll link in the description the website and where you can find the plans for this boat so the reason that you want to smash the notification bell and go ahead and subscribe to see all of my latest videos is because I am planning on building another boat I have in the past couple weeks purchased the Sherwood Queen plans. It is going to be a 17 foot tugboat uh, that I'll be building in my garage. I'm also going to be filming every step. I'll be taking questions uh, just in case uh, for all, everyone who's out there wanting to build a boat. I know that I was had it I know that I had a lot of questions when I first started. Um, thankfully I had some experience with woodworking that really helped but Again, everybody has questions when they first start. Hopefully that boat will be starting soon here within the next month. Um, just waiting to uh, get some of the wood that I need for it um, and fasteners and everything else that's going on. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to see all the latest content that I have. Um, thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video.